Hey there, everybody. Pastor Rick here. Uh, just sharing with you. I'm outside today. Uh, it's pretty rainy out here, uh, but it's it's actually not too bad. I just want to share with you a little bit what God has put on my heart about the passiveness of the modern church. Uh, and the reason we're going to talk about this is I've had a lot of people talk to me lately, and they've been like, why is the church so passive? How come we're not standing up for our rights? Uh, there's petitions out there. There's people saying we should just do uh, church no matter what. We should do church no matter what the government says. And, and, and the big question that keeps coming up is, Pastor, when when is the time for the church to be more active, to be more passionate, to be more aggressive, and to be less passive. And I want to tell you something. The time for the church to be more aggressive, if you would, is actually right now. The time is now. Now is our time. Now is our time to take a stand for what we believe in. But here's the kicker, guys. Please don't turn this off. The kicker is this. Now is not the time for us to have a revolt against the government or a rebellion against the government. You know what? They thought they thought that's what Jesus was going to bring to the Israelites. They thought that that's what Jesus was going to bring to the Jews when he's riding in on the back of a donkey. And they're saying, yeah, it's time for a revolution. It's time for a rebellion. You know, when Peter grabs grabs his sword and cuts off the guy's ear when when they're coming after Jesus and, and, and Peter thinks it's time for, for that re revolution. It's time for that rebellion. And yet we see Jesus heal, heal the aggressor and criticize Peter. And he's, it's not the time right now. And yet it is time for a revolution of sorts. It's time for the real revolution that Jesus came to bring. And that is not a revolution against the government. It's not a, it's not a rebellion against the world. It's actually a revolution against the evil that we've allowed to get into the church. It's actually a, a rebellion. It, it, it's actually, he's here to fight for us. He's here to go to battle for us against the things that we have inside of us. You see, right now uh, is a time for revival. Right now isn't a time for rebellion. It's a time for revival because Jesus wasn't worried about overthrowing governments. He was worried about overthrowing hearts. And that's the time that we live in right now. Now's the time for the church not to be passive. But we've, we for far too long, we've looked at the church and we've said, the church is that place that I meet on a Sunday morning. The church is essentially my pastor. The church is essentially the leaders of, uh, of the group that I meet with. And so if my pastor fails, the church fails. If my pastor doesn't do this, the church hasn't done this. And yet that's totally contrary to the word of God. The word of God has called all of us to take a stand. The Bible says that we are all the body of Christ and that we are all so, got different th things to do in the church. We've all got, you know, we're all limbs, we're all fingers, we're all, we all have a, a gifting in the church that we are all supposed to use. And so when we look around at the world today and we say, look, why are we stuck at home? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this one from home today. Why are we at home? home why are we not not jumping forward and the reality is is that god wants the church to move forward with passion that god wants us to take a stand for truth god wants us to take a stand for evangelism god wants us to take a stand for fellowshipping together god wants us to take a stand for the lost but here's the kicker the stand doesn't always have to happen in a building of 200 people that stand's supposed to start with you you see, people keep talking about this thing called the new normal. What's the new normal going to be when this is all said and done? What's the new normal going to be inside the church? Are you know, going to have to wash our hands? Are we going to have to sit far apart? Uh, is the new normal going to mean that they don't want us singing? What's this new normal? And the reality is I didn't like the old normal. The reality is we look at the old normal of the church. Yeah, there's some great things happening. There's some incredible things happening. I don't want to put anybody down for doing incredible things that God has led you to do. But the reality is, is that as we look at the old normal, we see people continually being afraid to share the gospel with their neighbors. In the old normal, we still weren't doing small groups. We still weren't doing home churches. In the old normal, we still struggled to invite people over for barbecues. In the old normal, we still waited for a Sunday morning service to see our friends get saved, to see our family get saved. And the farthest we were willing to go is to say, hey, there's a Christmas program going on at our church. Why don't you come? And then we would wait for this rebellion, this, this revolution that our pastor or the evangelist or the special speaker speaker would bring into our churches to bring a revival. In the old normal, we'd go all week long feeling disconnected from the Holy Spirit and, and, and disconnected from our Heavenly Father, and we'd have to wait for a moment. And, and only if the worship team, 
only if the worship team did the, the, the very best job, the very most professional or the, or the best led job, we would feel a moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's, that's the old normal that we were living in. And I don't want that old normal to come back. And so we're all waiting. We're all desperate for that thing we, 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 that was familiar, that thing that, that made us feel like this is church. And I want to tell you something. I cannot wait. I Just everything in me, I cannot wait to get back into a, our building and worship with, with, with all the people in our church again. I can't wait to put my arm around somebody and to pray for them. New normal, old normal, I don't care. I want to pray with people. I want to do those things. But here's the thing. I don't want to be, you know, the evangelist of the church. I want you to be the evangelist of the church. I don't want to be the hands of the church. I want the people to be the hands of the church. I want us as a unit to feed the hungry. And the, and the thing is, is that when we look at the church and we're saying, hey, how come we're not meeting anymore? This is not okay. This is not right. The Bible calls us to continue to fellowship. It says, do not, do not give up fellowshipping like some are in the habit of doing. We've been called to be a body. We've been called to be active. And so people are getting anxious and they're saying, pastor, we've been called by God to meet. And you're right. We have been called by God to meet. But the reality is, is whether we meet with 200 or whether we meet with eight, we're still meeting. And you can still meet with a ton of people each and every week. You can still bring the gospel to your workplace. You can still bring the gospel to your to your neighbors, to your friends, to your family. We don't have to be a passive church. You see, the only thing that makes a passive church is passive people sitting in the pews or in the chairs or wherever you want to sit. That's what makes a passive church. But you see, an active church, a church that doesn't let anybody control what we do, it isn't simply the church that fights to meet on a Sunday morning. I want to tell you something. Ministerials around the country are meeting together, petitioning our governments. We are doing what we can to, to, to prompt the government to allow us to meet again. And the reality is, I don't want to start meeting just as 12 people or 50 people and like, 12 services in a day. I want church to be in my home for a time being. I want church to be in your home for a time being. I want it to be that when, when they say we're going to open the doors for good, when we can truly worship with our hands raised and, and shout from the rooftops, and when we can do all this incredible things that we do in church, I don't want it to be stunted. I don't want it to be, I don't want to be bound by what worship looks like. But I also don't want it to be the same 200 people that show up on a Sunday morning. Because if 200 people show up when the door is open, that means that we've wasted two or three or four, even five or six months, however long this has been. And and if, if our churches aren't more full when this COVID crisis is over, do you know what that means? It means that the church is passive. It means that no matter how hard we fight to get churches reopened, if we aren't seeing people saved simply because we don't have church on a Sunday morning, it means that we're not living the gospel message that God has called us to live. You see, if we were to be aggressive or if we were to be passionate Christians, we'd be doing these things. So really, the church doesn't have to be meeting on a Sunday morning to, in order to, to not be passive or whatever. We don't have to be passionate. It doesn't destroy ourselves when we were a passionate a passive church just because we're not meeting but we are a passive church if people aren't praying so number one if you don't want to be part of a passive church it doesn't start with your pastor it doesn't start with your elders it starts with you getting on your knees and saying i don't want to be a passive christian because the church is made up of the believers and you start by saying god i'm going to talk to you and that's praying and praying passionately praying on your own praying with your family praying with your neighbors, praying with your pastor or the elders, calling people up and saying, hey man, how can I pray for you? That's what a passionate believer does. They pray all the time. And there's no better time to start praying than right now when so many of us are at home. Teach your kids how to pray. That's the second thing. We're supposed to raise up children who love the Lord. You know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Bible says to teach your kids to pray. The Bible says to teach your kids the word of God. Right now is the time to be passionate praying. So if you don't want to be part of a passive church, regardless of if you're meeting on a Sunday or not, pray. And I want to extend that. Don't just pray for people, pray with people. There is never going to be a law that's going to keep me from praying with my neighbor. There is never going to be a law that's going to keep me from praying with you when you call me up and say, Pastor, I need somebody to pray with me. So it doesn't help for us to sit back and say, well, when are, when are we going to be able to be Christians again? The time is now to be a Christian. The time is now to be passionate. The time is now to live that life that God has called you to live. There's nothing restricting you right now from calling somebody up and praying for them. 
I think that everybody, we should be, we should be calling five, six, seven, maybe even 10 people a week, praying for people, talking to people, loving on people, because that's what the world needs right now. We need a church that shows the world that we can be, we can be engaged from a distance because I, they're going to open our doors again. We are not restricted long-term. We will worship together again. Are you praying? The second thing that I want to challenge you with is there might be some laws in place. There might be some things that the government is saying we can't do. For example, right here, we cannot get together in groups bigger than 10. That doesn't mean you can't have a barbecue with a couple friends over. If that's what it meant, they would have never let restaurants reopen because they let restaurants reopen so people could sit down around the table and fellowship. The Bible says don't give up fellowshipping like some are in the habit of doing. So don't give it up. Get together with your neighbor. Have a barbecue. Have people over. Live the life that God has called you to live. I got, I got people telling me all the time, they're like, well, I bet you the underground church in China, they're still worshiping. Yeah, they probably are still worshiping. They're worshiping exactly like you're supposed to worship and I'm supposed to worship. Not worried about a great big building, but worried about their friends and their family. They're probably having people over for barbecues. They're probably having people over hiding in their basement. Six, seven, eight, nine people getting together, praying, visiting, encouraging, lifting one another up, living the gifts of the Holy Spirit in their presence. And so don't use the church of China as that because that's the point. You can be that like that church right now. The government says you can meet in groups of no larger than 10. So start meeting, start getting together, start having barbecues, start having, having supper and, and, and start visiting and fellowshipping and worshiping and praying and being in one another's presence and lifting one another up. Because if you do that, the church is going to grow. So many people who are talking about the church not moving aren't moving. But the church is going to move when you move. So pray and pray often. Pray with people, pray for people, pray around people. Pray, 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 pray. Number two... Don't stop fellowshipping. You say, well, I'm going to follow the recommendations. Great. Follow the recommendations. I, I, I applaud you continue to do that. And if you think the recommendation means stay home, totally isolated, go for it. Nobody's going to ho hold you back from that. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to condemn you. But then you need to use the resources that God has given you because you still have a call as a Christian to reach the lost. You still have a duty as a Christian to pray for people. You still have a calling to change the world, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked. All of these other things are things that God has called you to do. So either do what, you, what you're convicted to do and meet in groups that, that still meet the criteria or stay home and find a way to, to fulfill God's calling for fellowship in your life. But I just want to I just want to touch on something real quickly here. I'm going to follow the laws of the land. I'm going to the Bible tells me to honor, honor the laws of the land. And right now, the laws of the land aren't asking me to sin. And God always comes first. And the, and the government's not asking me to sin. So I'm just going to keep honoring those, even though they might be restrictive. I'm going to keep being faithful to what the Bible tells me to do because I can still be the church everywhere I go. I can pray. I can visit. I can celebrate life with people. And it sucks that it has to be 10 or under right now. And I believe they're going to open it up any minute. Maybe they'll even open up before you watch this message. But the reality is, is that you can still do things. And that recommendations are there to keep people safe. We need to, we need to honor those as best we can. But we also need to never honor other things more than we honor the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm always reminded about being back in Africa. You hear me talk about Africa all the time. But when I was in Mozambique, the government of man, actually the government of the U.S. and I think the government of Canada sent letters, messages to all their citizens in Mozambique and said, we recommend you get out. And I remember telling my Christian friends this and they said, why would you do that? God has called you to be there until you have to get out. Don't get out. And so we stayed in Mozambique. We continued to share the gospel. Even with guns going off on the highway outside our place, we heard grenades going off. It was, it was crazy and it was even scary sometimes. But I didn't put that recommendation above the need of the local people to hear the gospel message. And we never, we need to always say, God, what do you want me to do? God, and listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to God's leading in your life and go out and make a difference. So pray with people and find a way to connect with people. That is absolutely vitally important. 
And I think the third point that is incredibly important is that now is a time to allow people to do that, to bless people as they do that, not to condemn people who are meeting with, with six or seven people and say, well, that's not the recommendation. Do you know what? They're honoring the law and they're honoring the conviction of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And we need to start blessing people and say, you know what? If that's not for you, that's no problem. It's not a problem at all, but these people are not, are not sinning. It's not sinful to get together with eight people. You're still honoring the government. You're still honoring the law. It's not sinful, but we need to start making a difference, people. The church needs to be active. People need to be getting saved. And, I, and sometimes I worry that when we get back to the, the normal, whether it's the new normal or the old normal, the reality is that the church in North America is not on a state of growth. We're in a state of decline. And the big reason for that is actually because we've allowed the normal to be the pastor, the elders, telling us what to think, telling us what to do. And, and God has called me to be a teacher. Uh, you know, I'm a pastor who God has called me to teach. And part of calling somebody to teach, when, I, when you go to school and you learn and the teacher is teaching you, they're not teaching you so that for the next 50 years, you, you're just going to just be like, okay, what is that? What is their you know, oh, teacher, what do I do next? They're teaching you so that you can learn how to, how to read and write and all that stuff and learn how to, how to grow. And as my job as a pastor is to teach you how to grow and then how to, you know, just like in jobs, how to send you into the world so that you can experience the power of God in your life. And so my challenge today, it's a little bit of a different message today, but my challenge today is for those who, who say, when is it time for the church to take a stand? When is it time for a revolution or a revival? I want to tell you, now is the time. Now is the time. Not a rebellion against the government, but a rebellion against the sin in my life. I need to go to battle. I need to go to battle against the unforgiveness in my life. The Bible says if you don't forgive, you're not going to experience the, the benefits of forgiveness. You know, it, it talks about that in the Lord's Prayer, you know. You got, you got, I got to get out there. I got to work on my issues. I got to forgive. I got to spend time in prayer. And COVID-19 is the best play time to do it because I'm not supposed to be a lot of places. I got to spend time in prayer. I got to spend time in the Word of God. The Bible says spend time in the Word of God. I got to spend time with my family. I got to spend time with my wife. And not only that, I'm allowed to spend time with my friends. I'm allowed to get out there. I'm allowed to connect with people. And whether I connect with people in person because I'm convicted to do that or whether I say, you know what? I'm a little bit nervous still. I want to connect with people on Zoom, on Facebook, on phone. I mean, people, phone is a great way to connect with people. Just start talking to people and making a difference. Because I believe that if every Christian looks at a mirror and says, look, am I a passive Christian? Am I praying regularly? Yes or no. Am I praying with people? Yes or no. Or am I just praying for them? I'm just praying these light kind of, you know, God help them kind of prayers. Or am I actually engaging people in prayer? Then am I connecting with people? Am I feeding the hungry, clothing the naked? Am I fellowshipping with other believers, whether on Zoom, whether on Facebook, whether in person, which we are still allowed to do to a degree? Am I doing the things that God has called me to do? And finally, am I being a person who encourages others or am I pulling others down by berating them for following the convictions of their heart? The reality is, it, is if somebody's uncomfortable with the fact that I had a barbecue with somebody the other day and they say, Rick, I don't, I don't feel comfortable you stopping by my house, that's okay. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be hurt. Just don't judge. I'm just going to say, you just honor the fact that we follow our convictions as long as we're obeying the law. Uh, and I, I'm reminded, like I said, I'm reminded of Mozambique. I'm reminded of a lot of recommendations that I've had in life where God has said, that's a great recommendation for safety, but I have called you to do something over here right now. And so just for everybody's interest's sake, I guess, I'm doing my best. I'm not visiting the elderly. I'm not going to people who are vulnerable. I'm not doing those things. But there have been times where God has said, go and meet with somebody. Restaurants are open outside. Call somebody up and say, let's go out to a restaurant outside, keep our distance, and make a difference in the world today. God has not called you to be passive. Now is the time to be to be passionate and not passive. Now is the time to make a difference. Now is the time to start planning a small group, a, a, a really tiny little church that you can grow into something bigger that can join the bigger body when we get to meet again as a bigger body. So as a pastor, I'm fighting. As a pastor, I'm fighting uh, in order in order for us to be able to maybe meet again sooner rather than later. We're petitioning government. We're doing everything that we can. But in the meantime, we can become better believers, not relying on somebody else, but relying solely on the Holy Spirit. And we're going to find people getting saved. We're going to find 
us growing closer to Jesus, we're going to find our marriages better, our families better, our relationships with our neighbors better. So guys, put away your fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear. The Bible says that quite clearly. You do not have a spirit of fear. So let us go out with power this week. Let us go out and make a difference this week. Let us go out and be world changers this week. Love people. So one last time, I don't repeat myself all the time, but pray, pray, pray. Connect with people. You've been called as believers to connect with people. Do not judge. Connect, listen to the guidance of God, follow the guidance of God, and do your best to honor everything the Bible says. So God bless, and I'm looking forward, not to, not to things going back to normal. I'm not looking forward to that. I want to see a pa far more passionate church in the end than we had before. I want to see the church in North America grow and not die. So I, I, I'm not looking forward to going back to normal. And I'm not looking forward to the new normal. I'm looking forward to going back to God's normal. And God's normal is the normal I read about in the book of Acts, where people were being added to their numbers daily in these small little pockets of Christians sharing their faith, not, not because of great big speakers, but because of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. So I just want to I just want to let you know that we're praying for you. We're praying that the church can get back together soon where we can meet and fellowship together because that's part of God's plan for us. But God's plan for us goes much deeper than sitting in a chair and standing there with your arms raised. It's it's on your knees beside your bed. It's around the fire it's around the fire pit with your neighbors. It's it, it's it's on the phone. It's on Zoom. It's on all these other things. So never, ever, ever stop being faithful to what God has called us as Christians to do. When is the time to stop being passive? Now. Now is the time to stop being passive. So God bless.